Now, fighting in war zones such as Afghanistan and Iraq can be a traumatic experience and a study of returning troops has found many veterans struggle to switch off from the violence when they return home. The research from King's College London shows one in ten soldiers have behaved violently in the first weeks back. Let's talk about the experience of former Afghanistan veteran Lewis Mackay, who's with his wife Emma with us this morning. morning. Very good morning, morning to you morning. both. So, Lewis, just tell us, where, where, where were you? Where did you fight? When were you with the um, Army? In 2007, I went to Iraq, and I was based in the uh, main airport there. And in 2010, I went to Afghanistan, and I was based in Nari Siraj at first, and then went down to Nadi Ali. OK, and I suppose, Emma, in a way, maybe it's easy to ask you, what did you see that had changed in Lewis when he came back? Everything. Um, from the minute he came off the bus to greet us all and everything, and he came over and he went straight to our son, and I had to kind of like tap him on the shoulder and say, hi, sort of thing. And is he went from, before he went, he was so laid back, really, really laid back, and really just a happy chap, to angry, not physically aggressive, but you could see it in his face, and the slightest thing would be like, he just go off on one. Mm. So. I mean, Lewis, it, 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 we appreciate you coming and talking about this mm. openly. It must be a hard thing to talk about, honestly. How did you feel in those weeks after returning? Why do you think you, you felt on a kind of trigger like that? Um, yeah. To be honest, I can't really, you know, I can't explain that. Um, you know, basically, you know, it's just, you know, I come off the bus, Emma didn't exist to me. You know, I knew she was there physically in front of me, but mentally, she, you know, just figuring it with my imagination, didn't exist. You know, my, my main focal point was Lucas, our two-year-old son. So I went straight to him, ignored the fact Emma was there, and then obviously it just progressed from there, didn't it? Yeah. This, this report, Lewis, talks specifically about soldiers come back and they, this is a kind of five week period when it immediately so presumably the events you've just seen witness firsthand are very real in your in your thoughts and it talks about you know the danger to a partner of mm -hmm. being hit mm -hmm. i mean that's that's what this amounts to you can talk about it in general yeah, terms yeah. but it is about violence yeah, of course yeah. it is. i mean did you feel close to that emma said you know it didn't come to that but we, did you feel that brewing very much so um and there was times that emma could doing something, you know, even just putting a cup down on the table. And if it wasn't where I wanted it, I'd want to hit her. So, you know, I, I come, it, there was times where I was either sitting on my hands or biting my fist, walking out the room, because if I didn't, I'd have hit her. Well, Emma, and how does it f feel to hear Lewis say that? I get it, I do, I do understand, like, because um, my dad had PTSD after, um, leaving the, the forces. Those traumatic stress disorder. Yeah, so it was like, I knew that it's not actually him, and it's just like a state that he's actually in now. So, in a way, I could understand it, but I, I was a bit scared. And you I know, could, you, so, sorry, sorry, Charlie, you could see the signs yeah. because of the experience that you had already seen your father go through. Yeah. But Lewis, were you diagnosed with PTSD? No, I, I, didn't, I didn't go to a doctor and they you know, medically diagnosed me with it. But I was, I was fortunate enough that um, Emma's mum and dad worked for a charity called Talking to Mind. So straight away, Emma knew the signs and symptoms. And it was, I was fortunate enough to be able to go straight to the charity. But, you know, there's guys which aren't unfortunate like me. I know that, I mean, it, the longer term thing is you, you made your way through it, didn't you, the, yeah. the two of you, and it was a real struggle. I just wonder, I know it's a very close community within, particularly with wives, you yeah. know, and partners who are left at home. Did you compare notes? I mean, do, did other partners fit, have the same problems you had, or, or was there a kind of conspiracy of silence about what was going on behind closed doors? I mean, I suppose, you know, like, if, if your mates had an argument with their, uh, her husband and stuff, and you kind of have a, have a talk and have a bit of a grumble about them, but... In the same respect, you don't really say, oh, I think he's got this and I think he's got that, or it is pretty much tight-lipped. Well, it's very, I mean, it's very brave of you, Susanna said, to talk, be so open about it, because I imagine, Lewis, there are probably lots of people who you worked alongside yeah, who had, you know, worse problems than you did yeah. and maybe never got help or, you know, had relationships crumble and disappear. Yeah, that's it, you know, like I say, you know, I was fortunate enough to receive the help, but I know, you know, guys I served in Afghanistan with didn't receive any help. And, you know, 
they, for instance, you know, completely destroyed their houses, were physically hitting hitting their you know their partners, lashing out at you know family members, just turned to drink completely, you know. So all the signs and symptoms are there, but it it needs for that individual to come forward and say, I need help. You know, it, you know, it's, it's it's tough because you know you spend seven months on tour, you know, with, with a bunch of guys, and you think, I've just been on tour. You know, I'm not going to come forward and admit that and, and admit I've got something wrong with me. You know, if anything, you know, you feel a bit shameful, you know, to say, yeah, I can handle a tour, but I'm, there's something wrong with me. So, you know, it's kind of trying to urge the guys to say, yes, I need help. Do you think it was as a direct result of violence that you saw, the, the, the violence that you were involved in, or do you think it was about an intensity of experience that Emma just couldn't, wouldn't be able to understand that, that meant you felt very distant from her? Nobody who's kind of been in that kind of situation, i.e. operational experience, you know, would ever be able to say, I know exactly what you're going through, you know, because it's, you know, mm. it's, it's a complete kind of different level. Um, but, you know, with the amount of, you know, the situations, the things you kind of see on tour, mm. you know, nothing is ever going to, you know, compare to that, you know, so, you know, with all that thrown together, and then anything else that, you know, which goes on top of that, just puts you right over the, over the edge. Well, and, and Emma, as Lewis was saying, there'll be people coming back from, from tours now, won't there? Yeah. Who, you know, who are gonna go through what you went through, not knowing yeah. what to do. What, what would you say to anyone in that situation? Personally, the charity that we went to, Talking to Minds, was amazing. They, they saved our, our marriage, mm -hmm. didn't they? So it's like, they don't only just work with the with the guys who've got the PTSD. They they work with, alongside with the um, the wives, parents, anyone who suffers like by proxy, so to speak. Mm. But we we'll really appreciate you both coming in. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. Very Good luck with the future. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah. And you can hear more on that story on Final Four, which is tonight at eight.